Hello and welcome to News Click. Thousands of farmers are again coming to Delhi on 29th and 30th of November. It's going to be a replication of Kisan Long March of Maharashtra. Today we are joined by P. Sainath, founder editor of Pari, to discuss about the issue. He was also one among the first persons to give a call for Long March to Delhi. Welcome to News Click, Sainath. So let's start with the background of this entire march. I remember you writing an article on People's Archival of Rural India, where you called for a special parliamentary session to be held on the issue of agrarian crisis. So where did this idea of Long March originate? All of us were incredibly inspired by the Long March from Nashik to Mumbai. That was a really long march, 182 kilometers, where 40,000 Adivasi farmers, the poorest of the farmers, really marginal, organized by the All India Kisan Sabha, marched on their demands from Nashik to Mumbai, a week, one week. And one of the things that we saw there, which was unusual as compared to earlier marches, having lived 36 years, been based 36 years in Mumbai, it was the first time we saw the middle classes come out in large numbers to support in thousands, to uh, in sympathy and empathy with the farmers who had come there. These were very poor farmers. It touched the conscience of the Mumbai city. And their demands were reasonable. And there was also, they also reached out to the middle classes by marching at the dead of night on the last night so as not to disrupt the board exams of the children of Mumbai. And I think people really appreciated that. And responded with warmth and generosity. They, they came there with water, with food. People came and gave free pairs of chapels because there were so many thousands who had no footwear. When we saw that, the middle classes had not been mobilized for that. When some of us saw that, we thought, this should be happening in Delhi. That's where the power lies. And so a group, now the call for the march, on November 29th and 30th, that is given by the All India Kisan Sangarsh Coordination Committee. It's a group of around 180 farm organizations. Maybe almost 200, I believe, um, farm organizations, big and small. Our role as middle class professionals, etc., was how do we reconnect? Maybe the opportunity has come to reconnect the middle classes with the primary classes and workers. In September, you had a march which were of the All India Kisan Sabha where you had farmers, workers, workers, and, agricultural workers. and agricultural workers. And just together. one day before that was Women's March in Delhi. Yeah. So why can't we bring all these together and bring the middle classes in was an idea. And uh, I think there is some sensitivity growing around the country to this. We a middle class platform sprang up in solidarity, nation for farmers. Within this, there are people who are doctors, lawyers, teachers. Students. Tech, there have been groups forming in Hyderabad, Bengaluru, Chennai, techies for farmers, students. They might wear their separate armbands or headbands or t-shirts, but they will come as nation for farmers as the main banner in front. That'll be the, uh, that's the idea. And when I've been visiting the college campuses, etc., there has been a very good response to it. Though, of course, there are two problems. One is the elections being around the same dates from neighboring states where many more people would come and exams beginning on the 28th. So uh, let me come back to the issues when, on which these mobilizations are happening. So it still remains the minimum support price and loan waiver. What are the other things that you are demanding apart from? Oh, no, no, from there, are, there is more than that. The minimum support price and the loan waiver are the core of two bills that have been crafted by the All India Kisan Sangrash Coordination Committee, which must be passed. That is a demand. Which came out of the uh, mobilization that happened last year. Yeah, that must be passed. And I believe a large number of political parties have signed on saying that they support this demand and that they will pass these bills. But there is also the larger crisis 
I mean, the agrarian crisis is also an agroecological crisis. It's a question of women's rights in farming. It, it has issues related to the mega water crisis. There is, apart from a loan waiver, a larger credit structure and public responsibility for that. So, uh, there are questions of what kind of agriculture do we want 20, 30 years from now? What about the pending issues of land reform? In the first of the Swaminathan Commission or National Commission for Farmer Reports was given in, in December 2014. For 14 years, those reports have lain in Parliament without one hour's discussion. Five reports, six volumes. But when it comes to the GST for the corporate world, a joint session of Parliament is called in no time and held at midnight with the President of India there. Surely you can find some time for the farmers of your nation who have been in crisis, unending and ever escalating crisis for 20, 25 years now. So that, and that is the point that in that three week session it should be where you pass the two bills, you discuss the Swaminathan report, you discuss the women's rights and entitlements and try passing a bill on that. You discuss the mega water crisis and take a position on whether water is a fundamental right or a commodity. These, so there are, and let victims of the crisis address parliament and the nation through that. So uh, let's come to the organization of the march because if we look at Kisan Long March, it's a lengthy process. It took place over three months before the march actually started. I think What's two, actually, three, two, three years. Yes, before, uh, but the entire process took three, four months assembling food, convincing people to arrange food and all. So what's the plan when this when it comes to the Delhi Chalo March? There are several groups. As I said, there are well over 100 odd groups involved. And now the middle class is coming in. The logistics are going to be very complex. But then each group also looks out for itself. The Delhi, the Delhi government, the Delhi government, Mr. Kejriwal's government, has promised the creation of toilets for, and and, and uh, stationing of ambulances and will perhaps help with water also and some of their individual members of that government in their individual capacity are trying to contribute to the food packets that are required and others too you know maybe the hawkers federation others will all come in to provide something at cost that kind of talk and discussions are going on so we think this will happen. So it's doctors for uh, farmers, students for farmers. Have you also reached out to other political parties? The All India Kisan Sangash Coordination Committee has reached out to political parties and got them to sign on to the idea of those two bills. We as nation for farmers, which is, we are not the people who are the organizers right. of the march. We are a solidarity group. We are a solidarity group. We have created a petition to the President of India calling for that uh, special session. It's online. We have a dedicated website, dillichalo.in. And anyone can go up and sign it there in different languages. It's there in several languages, so you can sign it. Now in the dillichalo.in, there is also the updates on where it is at because people are bogged down in elections in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh. Things are happening. Now, one of the things that's happening everywhere, people keep asking me, how is it relevant to students? All over Maharashtra, Aurangabad, Maratwada, Vidarbha, Nashik, Telangana, Mehbub Nagar, Varangal, kids are dropping out of college and university as the drought bites in. Already their parents who are farmers have been bankrupted by the agrarian crisis of the last 20 years. Now the drought means they have no crop. There are dozens and dozens of kids in the universities of Pune and in the worst still in the privatized universities, private universities of Pune who are unable to pay their hostel fees, their mess fees, their tuition fees in complete dilemma and demoralization over what to do. These are so directly linked to the agrarian crisis. Right? So, I find that there is a great degree of sensitivity in that and I think you're going to also see the retired servicemen's groups which came out on September 5th. They will also, in my opinion, be joining this march. The pensioners, old pensioners of Pensioner Parishad, they will also be joining this march. 
In fact, one of the things that I found in the last several years, I've been talking at the military colleges, war college in Hyderabad, the military defense college in Mohove, in Delhi, the military college. And I find that army personnel are extremely sensitive to the agrarian crisis because your Jawan is a Kisan in uniform. Right? So that's, you'll find a very great diverse spectrum of people, but it's very important that this march of the 29th and 30th is a beginning, not a culmination. And I am finding every day people are telling me we have formed this group in uh, Sikandrabad, we have formed this group in Patna. I don't even know all the groups. It shows that there is some kind of ferment. So after the 30th, <coughs> we held a group meeting in Pune, Nation for Farmers. Veteran socialist Baba Adav came. I didn't phone him up. I didn't. He came there and he told me, he said, he told the crowd, I am very pleased that we are doing this. But he told me, I will not forgive you if you stop this after 30th. So coming to the last question, uh, you've already said that this is not going to be the end and there are programs which are going to be held in future also. So what are the things if this doesn't work out? What are the next step? And second, what's an appeal that you would like to leave this interview on? The first thing, I mean, I really want to appeal to all news clicks, readers, viewers, those who live in the national capital region, those who live nearby, and those who don't live nearby but who can come to Delhi, come there. What is the aim of it? You know, we don't believe that any one march or any one uh, rally will yield a transformational result. It's a process. The people who came to Mumbai, they had their demands, most of their demands accepted, and they still have to fight every day to see them implemented. That is one. But we think that simply the holding of a special session of parliament on an issue of poor people, that will be a historic precedent. Now, I don't expect that they will immediately do it there. Obviously, this parliament will already be in session when this comes. But we are demanding that every MP who claims to be pro-farmer, let him come and sign the petition for the special session. Let him or her march with the farmers towards boat club or wherever they will stop it. That's, that's one thing. Second, I think what makes this different from the earlier marches, from um, the September 5, which was a wonderful event, August 9th. The time censored in 2017. Yeah. yeah. So what makes this different is that you're broadening the spectrum to bring in the middle classes, the working class, a lot of people who don't go for rallies and political um, meetings and things like that. So on... on uh, it's like what Baba Adav said, I'll not forgive you if you stop on the 30th. Now what has happened is without much, you know, too much from us, groups have formed. Patna has formed Nation for Farmers, meeting on 23rd. Bangalore convened three meetings and the last meeting that I was there made one of Karnataka's most famous progressive writers, Baraguru Ramchandrappa, the convener. And the very simple democratic process. I think it's also good to, in a boost to democratic you know, discussion and functioning. What we do is whoever comes for the convening meeting is part of the convening committee. They, form, they choose their convener. None of us interfere in that. So you'll get diverse groups and chapters in different places, some, many of whom I don't know. We're finding it hard to keep pace and write that. Now, the thing is that the middle classes begin, A, talking to farmers and about farmers. That, you know, I think if lawyers, if law, now students for farmers, the WhatsApp groups are buzzing. DU for farmers, it's WhatsApp group will buzz. So likewise, in other professional and other occupational groups, the process, in the last 30 years, if I ask a Supreme Court lawyer or I ask a well-known journalist, when did you last sit down and talk to a farmer or a laborer? There is an embarrassed, sheepish silence, which I have found at every meeting of the middle class that I have spoken on this subject. Restoring that, that I, 
atomization that neoliberal economic policy has brought driving us very far away from the miseries of the countryside, the laborer, the farmer, that and now the industrial worker coming in, it creates a very different discourse that the word farmer, agrarian crisis, laborer, women's rights, all these things start coming together. So we believe Nation for Farmers will continue on the initiative of those who formed those groups. And there will be some universities, teachers, students will be talking to farmers, about farmers, and thereby changing our own consciousness. My appeal is this is not the culmination. It's a beginning. Come there and you will leave from there with a different way of thinking. That's all the time we have for this, Ainath, and we'll be following the march closely and we'll cover it extensively. Thanks a lot. Thank you for watching NewsClick.